So here about pricing and output decisions, we've got the shutdown point. What is the shutdown point? The shutdown point is the lowest price at which the firm should still produce. So after this point, the price is equal to the minimum point at the average variable cost. So uh, this is what I was, uh, you know, worried that uh, Hashim is mixing up with, is that the average variable cost, when it is very minimum, that's when you reach your shutdown, right? If the price fall below the shutdown point, uh, then the revenues will fail to recover the fixed cost and the variable cost, and the firm should be better off it if uh, if uh, it uh, shut down and just pay its uh, fixed uh, cost. This is the short run. No, this is you immediately you shut down. The short run, yeah. Sir, the long run. A general idea. So if I cannot pay back the fixed cost, then I can just cover the variable cost. I continue working. Yeah, uh, it says here you need to be above the average variable cost, right? Yes. So uh, and here you. Uh, now that's the minimum. Below that, if you can't recover your variable cost, you absolutely need to stop. If you can cover the variable cost and some, okay, that's good, maybe you continue. In the long run, the price in the competitive market will uh, settle at the point where firms will earn a normal profit over the long run. An economic profit will invite entry of new firms. Do you guys understand this idea? Economic profit invite entry of new firms. Every time there is a good profit, people immediately join. And if there is no profits, people will immediately uh, run. And shifts the supply curve to the right. You put downward pressure on the price and you reduce profits to normal level. So this is what the situation in the long run for any business. And economic loss causes exits of firms. So you shift the supply curve to the left, you put upward pressure on the price, and it will increase its profits to a normal level. So these are three scenarios where, in the long run, prices are going, you know, to reach zero economic profit, just normal profits. Perfectly competitive markets in an action here. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, if you are doing better uh, above average normal profits uh, then uh, these are the people who start uh, businesses a new firm will enter the market firms must find ways to produce the lowest possible cost uh, at uh, cost levels below uh, those of their competitors and firms that will find themselves unable to compete on the basis of cost might want to try competing on the basis of product differentiation so basically you move to a monopolistic Any questions? Any questions, Mohammed? Uh, we've got the monopoly consists of one firm. Firm has a power to set the prices. Uh, they are limited by the demand curve of the product. Here, every time we see a monopoly, we see demand curve. And we always notice that this goes faster. Margin of revenue. And just the example we said, if debit petrol or one gallon of uh, gas, it is 20,000 riyal, uh, you will only sell five in this uh, neighborhood. If you want to sell the fifth, the sixth, you need to uh, reduce the price, uh, hire someone, uh, do a special packaging, give them the debba with the fadi. You need to do something in order to sell more. And uh, the same thing if you want to do more. Now for your business, now right here, who would like to take the question, raise your hand. If you want to take a question on this uh, slide, raise your hand. What's the question? Uh, Iman, uh, why we produce six, not seven? Huh? Where do we produce six quantity, not seven? Tarek, uh, let's see, Hashim. Why we produce uh, six, not seven? Because after six and uh, seven, we decrease the. Because marginal cost. Adding, adding one more unit. Okay. Uh, will, will decrease the price. The price. 
Hashem, it is in front of you. Don't ask Tarek. The demand will uh, go less. No. Because marginal revenue costs marginal costs. Now, this is what you say. Now, Hashem, this is the perfect answer. If we do the seventh, it will cost us more than it will get us the revenue. Okay? So, if you go the sixth, nothing will decrease, nothing will increase. But that one more unit, its cost will be more than its revenue. Why we do it if it will cost us more than it will generate? Okay? And uh, that's because we're, that's where we stop. MC, and um, I think what I will do on the exam, I will give you a graph. And I will ask you to fix it. No? Ah, okay, you're not engineers. Yeah, and of course, if we are here, right here, if, let's see, if we are right here, between the average cost and the price. Uh, if we do this uh, here, uh, the graph, yeah. and uh, this graph, the total uh, space right here yeah. is going to be less. Did you guys get it? Uh, let's see, let's take this one more time, okay? Yes, uh, yeah. now it is guaranteed. Let's see, on this slide here, if, uh, let's take this, uh, let's say for example, if we produce right here, and uh, here is 0.7, and uh, we take this line over here, we're going to have to stop on the demand curve. And let's say this is point B hash, and uh, if we go straight all the way here, this is uh, this uh, red uh, square is going to be your total revenues, right? You will produce seven multiplied by, let's say, what is the number here, 120. Let's say here will be uh, uh, 100. So probably you're going to make 100 multiplied by seven, and that will be your total revenue. What about how much is your total cost? Now your total cost, it will be this point here will be point D hash. So this is going to be, this area here is going to be your, uh, let's see, I will, this here is going to be your new profits. You see? Now if you do it this in a graph and you actually measure it, uh, you use numbers, this is definitely going to be this. Okay? Now, what happens if you produce five? If you go and you produce five, then you will be right here. Let's say here's five. So five, uh, this is going to be right here, your total revenues, and your total cost will touch here. And this area here uh, will be your uh, profits. It's going to be less. And if you do it for every point, the maximum profit will be only when you have A, B, C, D uh, as per the original graph. Do you believe this? Yes. So wherever MC equals the MR, that's when uh, you will stop and that will give you the maximum. Huh? Ah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Sami? Yes, so once those two touch together, that's when you stop. So this is MC, and this is MA. They meet over here. That's when you stop your, uh, and that's going to be the maximum profit you will get. No, it's actually if you do it, you do the calculation, it will be less. You know why? Because if you come here and you see, here it is decreasing. And uh, here it's almost the same. So this area here is going to be uh, less than the area here. 
Okay. All right. And uh, let's continue over here. We continue here. We've got this uh, lessons of uh, perfectly competitive markets. And uh, in this uh, part, we're talking about it is extremely difficult to make money over the long run. Every competitive market, long run, you don't make money. Just short run. Firm must be as cost efficient as possible to survive. And it might pay for a firm to move into a market before others starts to enter. But there is a risk. Demand may not materialize. Okay. Are you okay with this, Amira? Yes. Monopoly market lessons. Uh, most important lesson is not to be arrogant uh, or come uh, recent. Assume that the firm ability to earn economic profit can never be diminished. Huh? Like somebody else can come or technology can change your position. Yes. Don't be so confident in your place. Yeah, don't. Uh, it's not guaranteed you will continue to be a monopoly. Like now, Microsoft. Yeah, now you can be a monopoly for a while, but you always need to be ready that you will not. Well, it says here it is important lesson not to be arrogant. Now, what you're doing now, you said that's arrogant. And the changes in the business environment will eventually break down dominating company and monopolistic power. Uh, and we talked yesterday about the example of AT&T and what happened to them. Examples discussion, uh, we've got this uh, blue fine tuna. What changes will occur in the market? Uh, sushi restaurants operate in a monopolistic uh, competition. Do you guys know what's a sushi? Yes. What's sushi? Sushi is. Sushi, they. You know, for example, let's say, uh, you know, yesterday we talked about Khat, right? Some people think Khat is a perfect competition. Some people say, no, it's a monopolistic. Same thing with the sushi. Some people say, sushi is a perfect competition. But we can see that, you know, a lot of people, they try to make it more that uh, this is, uh, you know, a grade A, grade B, and yeah, differentiation. Uh, and you can get low profit margins, even though if you are a uh, monopolistic competition. Summary of the chapter says in the case of a perfect competition, the firm has virtually no power to set the price. They are price takers, make normal profits. And Monopoly has the market power to set its price. And all firms attempt to produce a quantity where MR equal MC to maximize profit or minimize loss. Uh, this is the end of the chapter 8. <laughs> and now we're doing chapter 7. <laughs>